Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. The first animation I'd like to show you today is uh, sun up to sundown here across South America as captured by Ghost 16. And what we notice, if I kind of rock back and forth here, is the large shield of clouds and the showers and storms that kind of built on this lingering front that is in this area now. This is Uruguay and parts of Argentina. And that front is just slowly, very slowly, moving almost stationary uh, in that area throughout the day today, producing some locally heavy rains. I saw some videos of flooding in parts of Uruguay. We can even see as we get late in the day, the storms blowing up here off of the Andes Mountains. Now, as you look throughout much of the rest of southern Brazil, it was just hit or miss storms, a few of them down in Rio Grande do Sul, and then in pockets here, moving into western Parna and over toward Sao Paulo, uh, Minas Gerais, getting up into even parts of eastern Mato Grosso do Sul. But overall, that's kind of the, the pattern we, we've been looking at here. And what we want to talk about is this advancing front, which, to be honest, the models did a pretty good job at pinning that down. Uh, more than uh, almost two weeks ago started to see this and we want to see how much more rain is forecast to come out of that particular frontal boundary. So I watched it most of the day here using uh, the Argentinian uh, kind of a mosaic of radar images and I know when you look at this there are a lot of blocked beams that's what all those little um, spikes are on the radar but even as of this evening we saw storms in Buenos Aires province there were scattered storms around Cordoba and north of Cordoba and we are seeing, we saw today, storms that rolled right through the Paraná River and into Uruguay as well. So we not only have the satellite estimates, but we can see this. But I will take you back to the satellite numbers, and I want to give you a time period here. This will be January 10th through January 16th. This is total accumulated from the GPM mission, total accumulated precipitation. Now remember, what goes into this is not radar data from ground. We do have some space-borne radar that contribute to the GPM mission. Uh, and we've also got mostly passive microwave and infrared signal that gives us this. So notice up until uh, yesterday, where the latest data are from, much of the northern part of the Parna River, northern Argentina, into Rio Grande do Sol and Paraguay were very dry and, as we know, very, very hot. But these scattered storms have moved in, and you can see here that the satellite was picking up on some heavier rainfall down here in Argentina, including some key productive areas and also heavy in, in Uruguay. Now, just a reminder, uh, when we look at where we grow corn in Argentina, I picked out Cordoba. Before these rains arrived, uh, we spent several days in December and then much of January with temperatures. These are average temperatures, just so you understand here. The average temperatures were up here in the upper 80s, lower 90s. So you know that the maxes were then in the triple digits. This is very hot. And precipitation during that time period was few and far between. I mean, most of the end of December and almost all of January up to this point, extremely dry in there around that key productive area near Cordoba. Uh, if we go over toward the Paraná River, similar situation, okay? Into Brazil, just kind of keeping this discussion going, in Mato Grosso, that's the region that's seen decent precipitation. It's been in Paraná, which has been drier until lately when we had more scattered storms come through and into Rio Grande do Sul, which has also been quite dry. We'll get this to load here in a moment. We'll be able to take a look. There we go. So quite dry here. So better rains have been materializing as of late. We need to discuss if this is going to be the continue, continued pattern moving forward. So what's going on with a few of the different controls we've been discussing? We're going to start with the Antarctic Oscillation. Again, a reminder, this has been positive for the second half of October all the way in through, you know, to now. While it has, um, you know, bottomed out a few times, not gone below the zero value, meaning the Antarctic Oscillation has been positive, we can see these times when it kind of just um, relaxes. And what that does is that introduces the possibility of uh, better fronts coming through Argentina. That's really the main translation here. It's a shift in the westerly winds. Now it is expected to pop back up here again, but you can kind of see the oscillation continuing. Maybe an easier way to see that is to look at the vertical and zonal integral of total atmospheric momentum. You see these right in through here. Those are those times when we have high uh, Antarctic oscillation values. But look at how weak the flow is here in the subtropics. And this is largely a consequence of that east-focused La Nina we've been discussing. So the question is, where, where does all of this go? How does it interact with La Nina? How does it interact with the MJO? And here's kind of a first answer to that. What we're looking at here is the forecast of uh, excuse me, of um, uh, velocity potential. So that's air rising or sinking in the atmosphere. And remember that the blue, green colors, whatever these are, that would indicate rising motion and this would indicate sinking. So in the near term, see this? 
that is sitting right on top of, of Brazil. And this is our dry signal for Brazil's northern growing areas. But I see that the MGO largely wants to stay somewhere out here, phase six, seven, and eight, until we get into firmly into week two, and then there's better rising motion in the models. And we can kind of see why that is. Let me just show you here. If we slide down here and look at the, the trade winds, this is very interesting behavior. You see, we have right in through here some stronger westerlies that are showing up, or at least a westerly component of the wind. And at, at, as we get out there into week two, it's kind of meeting some stronger easterlies and giving us better rising motion in this area. And that, again, sits over Brazil's northern growing area. So we're going to watch for that transition in week two. But to be honest, um, at first thought, I was like, this atmosphere and the behavior of these trades actually has a bit of an an El Nino kind of look to it, not La Nina, until you start to see the trade winds kind of strengthen again over in this region. And th that's just an interesting, I don't know, it, it feels as though that the La Nina has lost its, of course it has, we've been discussing it, but it's lost that 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 um, grip it had on just persistent trade winds. And now they're in quite a bit of a state of flux. So how do we stitch that whole narrative together? Well, we expect this in the near term, when there's a lot of subsidence over Brazil's northern growing areas, we see a suppressed monsoon. With the stalled out front to the south and the Antarctic Oscillation bouncing off of zero, there's better indication of that front that's here and, and gonna stick around. So what are we talking about? This is hitting a lot of Argentina's main growing area and Uruguay. And if this even verifies at half this anomaly, that is great rainfall into this area from Buenos Aires, which is here in this province, over toward Cordoba, back to Santa Fe. And that's kind of that triangle of high productivity for corn and soybeans. Now, as you get into southern Brazil, while you do see speckles of these uh, drier colors, there's still convection here. There's still storms. It's driest to the north where the storms are much, much more scattered. Now, if we want to go take a look at what that's doing uh, in terms of the position at front and the actual rainfall, I'll show you first that over the next five days, we've cooled off what has been extremely hot weather in Argentina. See how it's pushing north? It's now into Paraguay. It's moving into southern Brazil. That's over the next five days. And that front that's caught in between there, watch as we kind of add up the rainfall in that area. So this again starts here on, uh, on Monday night and plays through Tuesday into Wednesday and getting out there toward Thursday and Friday. So during that time period, this is just to the end of this week, we see a lot of scattered thunderstorm activity here and some locally heavy rains. North into Paraguay, where it's still hot, and parts of northern Rio Grande do Sul, Santa Catarina, and this part of, 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 of Parana still showing up drier with scattered convection kind of around it. And you can see the drier wedge that's here. And all of that is, is the weakening of the monsoon right now, the suppression of the convection due to the upper level positive velocity potentials associated with the MJO. But as we go beyond Friday into the weekend, and then out into early next week, we start to see things filling in in southern Brazil. I'm just playing early next week. You see that's coming in there and very heavy rainfall into this area. So this has been kind of a feast or famine situation. The famine has ended and look at all the rain that the models continue to produce in this particular region. We think about that and we say, where's this all going? Well, we looked here and we saw, there it is. We saw that as you get out there into week two, look at the ensemble average, better rising motion, right? So when we get into week two, watch this. This is this coming week, drier here, as we let this we do a one week sliding window into next week, which finishes here basically on January 31st. Do you now see how the better rains are moving a bit farther to the north? Now, in the meantime, this section of Brazil is trying to harvest a crop as fast as it possibly can and trying to plant the safrina crops of corn and cotton as fast as they can before the monsoonal rains possibly come back in a bit heavier. The most confusing part to all of this is when I show you this next few graphics. Our La Nina continues to show up here. Despite the interesting behavior in the trade winds, there's still evidence of some uh, uh, upwelling here, which means the atmosphere is still base La Nina, okay? Now, if you historically correlate colder water here in January and February, you get this. That's Nina region one plus two, January, February, correlation with surface precipitation rate. Now, this comes from uh, the NCAR reanalysis data tends to be a positive correlation here with ocean temperatures. 
So that means, I'll put a D on it, that means we would expect this area to be drier, southern Brazil to be drier January, February, given what's going on with La Nina. But this La Nina, I don't think that the trade winds are behaving truly as La Nina, which means these already weak correlations, sorry, right up here, are not going to hold on. They're not going to be strong. This is not, I don't think it's dominated by La Nina at all at this point. I think it's other factors, the AAO for one, and the MJO and its movement. So what, what I'll say is this, these stronger westerly wind bursts, I think are key um, to understanding how we're gonna be getting rising motion back over parts of Brazil. And what it shows is, once we get out there at the end of this month and into February, we're improving Bra Northern Brazil's precipitation. And the European model kind of sees that. This is now the new February outlook. And interestingly enough, it tries to bring in some drier conditions back into Argentina, which is really wet now. But this last kind of stronghold of drought in southern Brazil is now forecast by the model to go back over wet. Now, I basically today proved the consistency in the model because I use a lot of model output to do that. Um, but at this point, as I search for different drivers impacting South American monsoon and the frequency of frontal passages coming through, um, you know, through Argentina, I can't see other factors having more dominant control than the MJO and the AAO. And that's why I presented that to you today. So this must be watched because this would be a pretty sizable pattern flip for Southern Brazil, including Parna, whoops, sorry, Parna's here, but then up to Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, which is there and over toward um, this region, which is Mato Grosso do Sul. Those are key areas to be watching as we progress forward throughout the month of February. This is the model update right now though. So I'm gonna keep watching this to see if there's some other factor I can kind of throw into the mix to understand it a bit better, but I'll wrap it up here and talk to you again on Thursday. Thank you.